Hi, I'm Jeremy Williams, and this is my presentation on Frank Lambert's uh, Peddler and Divinity, George Whitfield and the Great Awakening. Uh, Mark Knoll says that George Whitfield may have been the best known Protestant in the whole world during the 18th century. He was the single best known religious leader in America of that century. He appealed to the heart. He knew how to play on emotions, and he also knew how to exploit the rising tide of newsprint and how to engage in what would today be called publicity stunts. It's a perfect segue into uh, Lambert's Peddler and Divinity. Um, Lambert basically looked at a different approach uh, from Whitfield, and his thesis is essentially that um, Whitfield used the means of a commercialized society uh, to reach a broader audience and to spread the revival uh, message and preach the gospel um, to anyone and everyone in the colonies. Uh, in the first year of his public ministry, press coverage will help elevate him and his revival to an unprecedented level of popular acceptance. Uh, Whitfield will become the best known evangelist in the Atlantic world, primarily due to newspaper advertisements. London's newspapers uh, provided a means to publicize sermons or securities. Um, and this is going to lead to, in 1738, colonial newspapers will start to reprint Whitfield's advertisements. And this is interesting in that it's about almost two years before his preaching tour uh, reaches the colonies, which will trigger the Great Awakening. Uh, press coverage on both sides of the Atlantic prepared men and women to receive the spoken word from Whitfield. So Whitfield is publishing uh, advertisements, he's printing his sermons and journals, and he is sending them across. They are reaching uh, across the ocean uh, to a broader audience, even before he arrives in the colonies. Uh, upon arrival in Pennsylvania in 1739, Whitfield carried boxes of evangelical books and pamphlets, cartons of his own printed sermons, journals, letters, and prayers. According to Lambert, his shipload of consumer merch consumer merchandise symbolizes his immersion in a thoroughly commercialized society, one that provided him with the means of constructing a new religious discourse, modern revivalism. Commercial language and techniques offered him a new way of organizing, promoting, and explaining his evangelical mission, excuse me, basically making the whole world his parish. Whitfield employed the tools of trade to promote the gospel, right? He took what was happening, what was going on, the uh, the fact that uh, there are many colonial newspapers, uh, he could reach a broader audience and he could spread his message and people could start to anticipate his arrival. People could start to read what he had to say and get ready to uh, go to one of his sermons. His coverage was extensive. 60% uh, of the Pennsylvania Gazette's issues devoted space to Whitfield. The Virginia Gazette carried his stories in a third of its issues. And one of Whitfield's biggest promoters was Ben Franklin. Uh, the relationship with Whitfield and Franklin was advantageous for both. Franklin will sell more newspapers and books, and Whitfield will reach a wider audience. Uh, Whitfield considered the reader as a consumer. He wrote for a mass audience, including the poor, even lowering prices of some of his works. Uh, he also um, made some of his works shorter. Uh, to again reach a broader audience. His writings represented the primary means of receiving his message. Um, a good example of that is in Virginia, he sent his sermons to some Virginia preachers. Uh, they would preach at their local churches or congregations, and that was a, a way to spread the revival through his sermons. Um, his legacy, Whitfield owed his fame not only to his charismatic evangelical preaching, but also to his extensive and continual transatlantic travel. His frequent publications conveying his experiences, including letters, journals, and sermons, familiarized the far-flung readership with the distant places he visited. In this way, Whitfield brought the empire to the awareness of many readers, not just evangelical Christians. More than any other single figure, he represented the British Atlantic world to its constituent parts, and he also played a key role in breaking down colonial barriers. Thank you.